In the Pokrovsk direction, the Russians fail to break through the Ukrainian defense. At the same time, the situation here remains the most difficult for the Ukrainian armed forces. As reported by Ukrainian resources, such a statement was made by the commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian army, Alexander Sirsky. Sirsky published a post on Telegram dedicated to the situation in the Pokrovsky direction. According to him, there are fierce battles there. According to him, the Russian command sent very large forces to this area in order to break through the Ukrainian armed forces' defense. The most intense fighting, writes Sirsky, is observed near Gradovka, Krasny Yar, Mikhailovka, adjacent to Selidovo, and also in Novogradovka itself. A number of Ukrainian media outlets claim that Sirsky intends to stop the advance of the Russian armed forces near Pokrovsk and Kurakovo. Hundreds of people are fleeing the eastern city of Pokrovsk every day as Russian forces slowly advance towards its center. The city, which had a pre-war population of some 60,000 and is a major road and rail hub, would be a great strategic prize for Moscow if it can be taken. It remains unclear if the Russian military, which is now less than 10 kilometers away, intends to fight its way through the city, which would likely incur civilian casualties, or whether it aims to encircle the city as it did in bloody battles to capture the cities of Bakhmut and Avdiivka. If Pokrovsk falls, the defeat would imperil Ukraine's defenses and bring Russia closer to its stated aim of capturing the entirety of the Donetsk region where it lies, Unlike Pokrovsk, where Ukrainian forces have built extensive fortifications, other parts of the Donetsk region still under Kyiv's control are less protected and could be significantly more vulnerable to the Russian onslaught if the key city falls. Though Kyiv hoped its Kursk offensive would undercut Russia's push toward the eastern city of Pokrovsk, that has not happened. Instead, Russian advances have accelerated while Russia has redeployed forces from other areas to Kursk Oblast. Moscow seems to have calculated it can contain the crisis in Kursk while exploiting Ukraine's shortage of troops in Donetsk Oblast. Despite loud statements about support for Ukraine, the new UK government is in practice less decisive on this issue than its predecessor, writes the British newspaper The Telegraph. As the publication notes, since taking office, Keir Starmer's government has done everything possible to create the impression that support for Ukraine will remain at the same level as it was. However, the latest statements by the Ukrainian president with undisguised reproach towards London indicate that Kyiv is alarmed by the passivity of the British government. In particular, Zelensky is disappointed that the British Prime Minister did not give Ukraine the go-ahead to use long-range Storm Shadow missiles to strike military targets deep inside Russian territory. This issue has become particularly acute in the context of the ongoing Ukrainian Armed Forces operation in the Kursk region. Worry about provoking a wider conflict between Russia and the West is a perennial feature of the willingness of many Western leaders to give Ukraine the weapons it needs to achieve victory. This is especially true in Washington, where the Biden administration's obsession with not provoking Putin into further acts of aggression in Europe has significantly hampered Western support for the Ukrainian cause, the Telegraph writes. The author of the publication notes that the United Kingdom is allegedly ready to give the Ukrainian military permission to freely use Storm Shadow missiles. But the problem is that their use will be carried out together with US military systems, meaning that the Americans will have the final say on whether they can be used against targets in Russia. And as long as the Biden administration remains in power, permission for such strikes is unlikely, the publication notes. Keir Starmer himself avoids answering directly whether it is Washington that is restricting the use of Storm Shadow. However, according to the author of the article, if Starmer really wanted to give Ukraine freedom to use Storm Shadow, his government would have lobbied Washington for this issue. However, it seems that under the new British Prime Minister, effective management of the Ukrainian issue is no longer one of our government's top priorities, the Telegraph notes. Recall Volodymyr Zelensky in another video address openly reproached Great Britain for losing its leadership in matters of support for Ukraine. Throughout this war, we have seen that Great Britain has demonstrated real leadership in weapons, in politics and in supporting the life of Ukrainian society. This is what has saved thousands of our people. This is what truly matches the strength of Britain. But now, unfortunately, the situation has slowed down. The president said. Zelensky assured that Ukraine will try to talk with partners to fix this. 